Aren't you thankful? Anybody thankful? Look at that. I love just seeing all the young people up here. Where's, oh, just bless your heart. Just for me, for me. Come on, let's give them a hand. Thank you, Lord. So good. I am so honored to be able to speak to all of you tonight. Um, we're, we, tonight is uh, just a special night because we have all of the young people and even, you know, I guess it would be first through senior high and then even all the way to, you know, the classics. We're all in here together, right? Uh, and we're thankful for that. And I want to talk uh, tonight uh, something that the Lord had laid on my heart. I, I was going to end up playing a video tonight. I wasn't, uh, um, I didn't know how I was going to be talking very well tonight or what, what not. But I woke up this morning with uh, something stirring in my heart for you. And, um, and so I'm excited to talk to every age. I'm talking to Jax. I'm talking to Samuel. I'm talking all over. I'm talking to Lance. I'm talking to Miss Ellen. I'm talking all the way in the back. I'm talking to Dina. I'm talking, I'm talking to Adam over there. I'm talking right to you. I'm talking to every person here, and I want to title this tonight's message, Spark. Spark. How many of you have ever seen a movie where there was a good guy and he's been captured? And there is a rescue mission going on. And maybe they're locked up in a maybe it's a fort or a jail or maybe the bad guys hide out. And what happens is, is the good guys come in to rescue their friend. And a lot of times what you'll see in those moments is there'll be somebody that has demolition. Anybody know what demolition is? It's a bomb or uh, some kind of an explosive, maybe to get access to the locked door. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Access to the locked door. And so they would go there and, and they would put that plastic, uh, you know, explosive or dynamite uh, uh, next to the door. And what would they do once they put that uh, dynamite next to the door? They'd have to do something to make it go off. Somebody tell me what they'd have to do. They'd, they'd have to light it, right? They'd have to set the fuse, right? Have you ever seen one of those movies when they're like, hey, hey, bud, you got the lighter? And they're like, oh, shoot, I, I don't have a lighter. I'm sorry. So all this whole mission, the whole mission to rescue their friend, to rescue the, the good guy, they, they went all, through all of this work, did all of the precautions, did all these things, and they got the, the bomb on the door, and, and they got the fuse, and, and it's, but they don't got a light. That would be kind of like, oh, what are we going to do? It's kind of sad, isn't it? <clears throat> And the rescue mission that God has called uh, here on this earth, did you know that you're part of the rescue mission? But what happens sometimes is we just forget the light. So I'm going to read a few scriptures tonight. And I'm gonna, I, I want you to hang with me because these scriptures, are they, they, they so fit together in a way that uh, it's just like, to me it just was like, okay, we're going to light it tonight, all right? And so this is, we're going to go to Luke chapter 18, and this is a place that I've been a little bit uh, as of late. Um, you know, uh, the Lord said this, will I find faith on the earth when I return? Will I find faith on the earth when I return? That's, that's, but there's a passage above that. This is the end statement in this little parable. And so Luke chapter 18, verse 1 through 8, it says this, Jesus told him a parable uh, <clears throat> about their need to pray at all times and not lose heart. So really tonight what I'm talking about, I want to talk to you about prayer. Jax, I want to talk to you about prayer when you can pray for your mom or your grandpa. I want to talk to you about prayer when you can pray uh, for your house that needs to sell and your mom and dad are stressed out. I want to talk to you about prayer when, uh, about a relationship that's not working and you just you, you need it to work. Your heart's crying out for it to work. I want to talk to you about prayer when it concerning your school and an and a, a outpouring of God in your school to where kids that are cutting themselves and, don't, and wanting to commit suicide and another one commits suicide and yet another one this year where, where instead the outpouring of the Lord comes in and they realize their value. I want to talk to you about prayer for this nation to where, where things look big or hard or impossible because of politics. or I want to talk to you about prayer concerning the rescue mission. How many of you want to, want to be a part of a rescue mission? Wouldn't that be cool? Like you get to be a part. That's why you're here. 
You are here. God called you. He found you uh, to be a part of a rescue mission. Now, here's the thing. Listen, if you're little, this is awesome. Pastor Evan and I have been talking about this. As she said, uh, you know, so many times uh, we, we want to grow up in faith when the Lord told us uh, in, in, we're, we're to become like a child. And so the reality is, is we need to be uh, childlike, not childish. And we were talking about childish versus childlike. There's a child or, or childlike faith that you and I need to be carrying. And so here it says this. It says, Jesus told them this parable. Um, and he said this parable about, about their need to pray at all times and not lose heart. Isn't that why you stopped praying? You just lost heart. In, in a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor respected men. This is verse 2. Verse 3. And there was a widow in that town who kept appealing to him to give me justice against my adversary. For a while, this judge refused. But later, he said to himself, Though I neither fear God nor do I respect men or care what people think. <clears throat> Next verse. Yet, because this widow keeps pestering me, because she keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. Next verse. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God, your, will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he, will he keep putting them off? Here's what he's saying. This, this judge answers the call to this widow because she kept on calling. This, this unjust, not, doesn't fear God, doesn't even like man, doesn't care about anything about her, yet he responds to her request just because he didn't want to be annoyed or pestered anymore. And the Lord said, consider this, this, this judge who's not righteous. Consider this judge who is nothing like me. Will I not, will I not answer Will I not attend to the word? Will I not, because I care for and I, and I love my children, will I not? Can, he, he's painting a picture here. He says, and will, 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 uh, and will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones? Somebody say, who's the chosen one here? You a chosen one? Will God not bring justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? Next verse. I tell you, he will see to it that he, they get justice and quickly. However, however, he says, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? You know what faith does? Faith doesn't quit. And this is, this is what he's asking. Our, our prayers, have you quit praying? How many times do you pray before you give up? How many times do you pray before you give up on praying for healing? How many times do you pray before you give up and just throw in the towel for our nation? How many times do you pray for your daughter or your son before you just give up? See, I had a child that had some childlike faith, and his name was Samuel. And we had lost a dog by the name of Grace, a little golden lab. She had swam down the river the weekend before, and some canoers picked her up. And we thought, man, I hope she doesn't do that again, because those canoers, uh, they said, next time we're, we would want to keep her. Well, the next weekend, we came home, and that dog was gone. And we never heard from that dog again. That was our best dog we ever had. Her name was Grace. And Samuel was devastated by that. He was so devastated um, that he kept praying for Grace to come back. And he kept praying for Grace to come back. And every night, I'd go up to the bedroom to tuck him in. And you know what he'd say? Dad, let's pray. Daddy, let's pray for Grace to come back. Daddy, let's pray another night, another day, another night, another night, another night. And this was what happened. One night, I came up there, and he said, Daddy, let's pray that Grace would come back. And this is what I thought. Will you not give up? That's what I thought. And when I thought that, I was like, that was so wrong of me. But I thought, he's not coming back. Or Grace is, she's not coming back. And I said, buddy, you know what? Let's pray for another dog. And the next day, my wife calls me and says, hey, you're not going to believe what 
is at the, our mailbox. And I'm like, a dog? And she's like, how did you know? I don't want to even talk about it. <laughs> she's like, you, you, uh, no, it's, a, it's like the cutest little dog. I opened up the tailgate of the Tahoe or the Suburban, and it jumped in. And, and then when we got, we, I drove it. I'm like, boys, don't touch it. It could be a bad dog. It could be mean. And then when it, we opened up the back, when we got home, it ran over to the to the the door and stood up on its hind legs and just waited to go inside like it knew it was our dog. And this dog's name was Doug. And we had Doug for 14 years. He was an amazing dog. Last, last June, he passed away. Childlike faith. Faith on the earth. See, faith on the earth looks like you and I continuing to take the stand of prayer. Look at this next verse here. I hope you put it up. I gave you the, you follow along with me, the mess, out of the message. This is the Message Bible, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 11. It says this, <clears throat> 2 Corinthians 1, 11. You and your prayers are part of the rescue operation. Let me say that again. You and your prayers are part of the rescue operation. This is Paul talking to the church at Corinth, and he had just faced death. They didn't think they were going to get out. But their dependence had to be on God, not on their own wise wit, not on something they had in their back pocket, not on a bank account, not on a car or a ship or any other thing. It had to be on the Lord. This is what it says right before that. And, he, and then he says this. He says, we're still in this place where we need some help. We're still in this place where we need some deliverance. And guess what? Uh, we Let me see. Uh, it turned out. Uh, da, 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 da. No, that's not verse 11. That's why. It's Okay, anyway, here's what it says. You and your, I don't know where it's at in there. Um, yeah, go ahead. Here, let me just read it. You just close your eyes, all right? You and your prayers are part of the rescue operation. I don't want you to, th I don't want you in the dark about that either. I can see your faces even, even now lifted in praise for God's deliverance of us. A rescue in which your prayers played such a crucial part. Let me read this same verse. Um, let me read the same verse. This is out of the BSV. Or you can put it up in another translation um, where it just talks about how prayers are, your prayers are a help. As you help us in your prayers, by your prayers. This is verse 11. As you help us by your prayers, then many will give thanks on our behalf for the favor shown us in as an answer to your prayers. Let me say it again. As you help us by your prayers. They're in, a, they're in a place where they need some help with prayers. The message says it like this. You and your prayers are part of the rescue operation. I don't want you in the dark about that either. I can see your faces now lifted in praise for God's deliverance of us. A rescue in which your prayers played such a crucial part. Your prayers play such a crucial part to seeing rescue. Your prayers, your spark, your, you've got to have that, that, that believing God would, that he could, that he will. This is faith. Faith is not based on what you see. Based is not based on somebody's past experience. It's based upon what did God say. It's based upon God's word. And what you and I need to have a conviction of stronger than what we see or what we think or what we feel. Or what we hear at the grocery store or what we see on the Fox News. Is we got to have a conviction of what God's word says. Because if we don't, here's what happens. We'll stop praying. We'll stop asking. When you and I stop praying, when you and I stop asking, it's like you and I going all that way and not lighting the fuse. What was the point? What was the point to get all the way to the place that, you, well, we really wanted to rescue. I mean, if it was up to me, we would rescue. No, it is up to you. You and your prayers are part of the rescue operation. Operation. I don't want you to be in the dark about that. I can see your faces even now lifted in praise for God's deliverance of us, a rescue in which your prayers played such a crucial part. For your school, 
for your family, for your finances, for this nation. There's scripture all over. If my people will humble themselves and pray. You know what it takes? Humility would have to say that God's right and what I see it doesn't matter. God's word still holds the authority. Ezekiel chapter 22 verse 30. And I sought a man among them that should build up the wall. You know, I mean, maybe you ever, anybody ever heard John Chris, the comedian, or maybe it wasn't John Chris, it was the other guy that was really famous uh, Christian comedian. But he'd say, I, I, I pray a hedge around him. Anybody know what I'm talking about? What was that guy's name? Tim Hawkins, Hawkins. And he said, I plead the blood, or I, 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 just, I just put a hedge around him. This is what this is talking about. This is where this vernacular came from. It says this, I looked for someone among them who would build up a wall. In the King James, it says, I looked for someone among them who would put a hedge. I want you to think of a hedge like a foxhole. You know what a foxhole is? When they would dig the trenches in world, if you've ever watched war uh, or maybe documentaries, there would be a trench. And that trench allowed them to move safely even, even in hostile territory because there was a wall that was greater than the adversity around them. They could move through. Did you know that God is looking for people to build some walls and to build a hedge so that to, so his plan and his desire could come about? But guess what? He didn't find anybody that was willing. He didn't find anybody that had faith. It doesn't really matter if I pray, because I prayed one time. Last time I went and knocked, and, and nobody was home. So have you ever done that, where you knocked, you didn't really want to knock? Mom or dad said, go knock on the door, and blah, blah, blah. And you're like, you really don't want to knock. You don't want to ask, so you go knock, and, oh, nobody's home. And you're like, go knock again. And then here they come out. This, this used to be the case uh, when my boys wanted to go fish a pond. You know, I'm like, buddy, you're going to have to learn to ask. Go knock on the door. And I'd stand there, you know. Oh, they're not there. I guess we're not going fishing then. Go knock on the door, right? Well, well, why, why could he find no one? And I stand before me in the gap in behalf of the land so that I would not have to destroy it, but I found none. God didn't want to destroy this city. God didn't want to. You remember Sodom and Gomorrah? We, we hear about Sodom and Gomorrah and all of the homosexuals and, and all of the crazy sins that were going on. Can I tell you that God didn't want to destroy that city? I don't think we remember that. He didn't want to destroy that city. He was, he was working with a man to ask a question. Would you spare it? Could you spare the city? Could you spare the city if there was just 50 righteous? Could you spare it if there was? And he went down and down and down. And what happened is, is Abraham, his faith, it, it was, was, was only at the 10. And the Lord sent in angels to go get his, his, his cousin or nephew, Lot. You know why? Because God loves people. A nation that's hurting, a nation that's going uh, in a way that is, is choosing a sinful way. Guess what is in the wake of that? Destruction and death. You know why God doesn't want that? Because he wants to be right? No, no, no. Because he hates death. Because he hates destruction. He's the God of life. He's the author of life. He hates that. Prayer. It's the rescue mission. It's the rescue mission for your friends that are hurting. It's the rescue mission for your, your mom and dad who are fighting and, and their marriage seems like it. you're thinking and you're worried and you're scared that they're going to get a divorce prayer not once but again don't leave the gap don't leave the gap this is to every person here don't leave a gap so I'm moving it from don't leave the gap to now don't leave a gap all of a sudden now that puts the responsibility back to you and me that the gap is, a, is my responsibility. The gap is whose responsibility? Whose? It's your responsibility. It's my responsibility. The gap. If there's a gap where the enemy is coming in or could get in, in your home, you can see it. You can sense it. You know it. You can, you can feel it. You, the Lord knows. He shows you because you're part of the rescue mission. So he shows you 
that the enemy's getting in somewhere so you can fill that gap. And what do you fill it with? You fill it with prayer. You let your heart, the heartfelt prayer of a righteous man, the Bible says, avails much. Let's go there. It says this, James 5, 5 16 through 18. It says the effect, this I'm starting in the latter part of verse 16. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man, <clears throat> the bottom half, the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. I think that's, we read that a lot. Maybe you've heard that a lot. You know the next couple of verses? He gives you and I an example of how much prayers can do. Because, you know, we prayed for my pinky that had a paper cut. And, well, I didn't really notice it get any better. And so I just, that's all my prayers are really good for is paper cuts. And I don't know. And that's why I really don't pray other than my mom and dad make me pray. Or I'm now 45, 50, 60 years old. And I'll pray when there's a dire straight emergency. Somebody's in the hospital. But I really don't believe anything's going to happen. Because I... I mean, I, I'm supposed to have faith at this level when I haven't even, I mean, I don't need, I don't pray about anything. I mean, what? No, it's because of your faith. Faith, there's not faith. If there's not asking, this is good for you and me to ask this question. Will I find faith? Will the Lord find faith when he returns in you? In your family? I'll tell you, you can measure right now how much. Here's the faith meter. What's your prayers look like in your home? What's your prayers look like, dads? What's our, what's our prayers look like leading our children? What's our prayers? Do we pray? Do we pray together? Do we pray? Oh, do we make declarations? What, what, what does it look like to pray? What does it look like? Let me ask you this. The judge knew the widow was coming to ask a question again. The judge knew. I'll guarantee you this. He, she kept coming, and she kept coming. I guarantee you the neighbors were like, oh, there, here she comes again, knocking on that door. Here's the deal. If you're praying, your family will know. If you're praying, your friends will know. If you're praying, your school will know. If you're praying, your nation will show. Your prayers affect great things. And there's an example given to us to show, and we go, oh, whatever. Oh, I don't see it. Oh, that's because you pray one time. That's because your faith is this big. You, your eyes, your unbelief is this big, and your faith or trust in the Lord's word is this big. And so it's not your faith that's the problem. It's the unbelief. It's all the other words that get in. So we need to get those words out. We need to go back and remember what God's word says. If you don't have God's word on something, you need to get it. A lot of times, I just saw this thing by John Chris uh, uh, actually today. And he said, uh, you know, you can't pray for everything. And it's true. You can't pray for everything. He said, yeah, yeah. So people are like, yeah, pray for me. And he said, it would be good for you and I to ask for what? Because my buddy, he's like, hey, pray for me. He's like, yeah, yeah, what do you need prayer for? He's like, yeah, I got a drug test tomorrow, and I just really need to pass it. He's like, I ain't praying for that. Like, in other words, you shouldn't have been, dude, bro. And then, then he's, a, he gave, he was, he's a comedian, all right? Uh, but, but, but legit. That, that's legit. Well, and he said, uh, the this, this next funny statement was, he said, oh, I got a family chat, and, and my, my sister, you know, you got the, those nephews that are just, ooh, you know, and, uh, and, and, and she says, hey, pray for Johnny, he's having a really rough day, right? And so he types on the family chat, hey, what's up? And everyone's like praying, praying, hands, you know, hands praying, and, and, they're, and he's like, uh, hey, what's up with Johnny? So then she texts him in the back door, you know, because she won't put it on the thing. So she comes around the back door, and she's like, well, he's got, a, like, um, his thumbs are hurting from holding the iPad. And, and so Paw Patrol, he's not able to, you know, keep watching it. So if you just pray, he's like, I'm not praying for thumbs when there's, like, missionaries and, and, and people getting kids. Like, I'm not praying for thumbs. Put the iPad down. So many of our prayers have nothing to do with it. anything that 
it, it's, it's like, what? Close with these last two verses, and then we're going to play a bit. Uh, uh, Dalton, if you can get this ready, get the last. Um, let me pull up the time on it real quick. Um, pull up uh, 2153 through 2507 on that video. That's what we're going to close with tonight. If you can do that, give me a thumbs up. Yeah, maybe halfway, three quarters. Okay, we'll see. All right. We're going to try for it. We're going to shoot for it. Matthew 21, 22. It says this, if you believe. Oh, no, no, I didn't give you the example yet. I didn't give you the example in James. So James, gave, he gives us an example. He says the effective or the fervent prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available it, or avails much. It makes a difference. And then he gives us the example of Elijah. And Elijah prayed that it would not rain for three and a half years. And guess what happened? It didn't rain for three and a half years. And then guess what he prayed? That it would rain. And guess what happened? It rained. That story's in the Old Testament. You can see it. You could see when he prayed that for it to rain, it, there had been a dry spell for such a long time. It looked like it wasn't gonna. It wasn't gonna. And he prayed and he prayed and he said, Go look. Go look. Go look. Go look, go look, go look. You know what, if he had to go look, it meant he wasn't giving up. He wasn't quitting. We can't quit on prayer. Will I find faith on the earth? If you've quit on prayer, your faith is dead. If you've quit on prayer, your faith is dead. Young people, listen. If you quit on prayer, your faith is dead. Why are you not praying? Why are you not praying for whatever? It, because you don't believe God's word is true. It's that simple. So what do you do to light the spark? You get back out his word. You get back out. You switch yourself back. And you take your mouth and you, take, you assault the words that are assaulting your faith. This is a, there is a fight of faith for you. There, there are words that are assaulting your faith that are telling you not to be part of the rescue mission, or not to pray, and you need to assault, you need to shoot fire back. You need to fire back at those words so that you can get dig in your pocket. I know I had a lighter here somewhere. I, I know it's here. I know I brought it, Johnny. I know I brought it. Until you can find the light. Until you can find the your spark, where you would, you out of your heart, you would believe in your heart and you would say something, you would pray and you would say, I'm going to pray this until the Lord comes back. I don't care. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I feel. I'm only moved by the word of God. That's the example. Go look again, he said. Go look again. In, in Matthew 21, uh, 22, it says this, If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask in prayer. This is after the fig tree. It says, if you believe, that word believe is, uh, is really this. It's the same, it's, it's pisteo, the same word we get, the base root of faith. If you have faith. How, how, how many of you know where faith comes? Hebrew, or Romans 10, 17. Where does faith come? By hearing, and hearing what? The word of God. You can't believe for something you don't have a word for. You can't believe God for something that you don't have his word on. And this is where we've gotten off when we're like, oh, pray, for, pray that I pass this drug test today. Well, there's no scripture anywhere that is going to give you the passing of a drug test when you're making choices. It's just not there. Now, can, can God restore you, redeem you? And you? Yeah. Can you get some favor? Yeah. But that drug test is going to show, uh, want to, or whatever it is. Anyway, thank you, Lord. So I wanted to show this video at the end because this is our application tonight. So what I taught today, and this is something that the Lord has been just dealing with me over and over and over again, is as a pastor, you can teach the word. And teaching is kind of like feeding. 
You know, how many of you got fed a little bit tonight? Like, oh, that was good. Yeah, yeah that's good. How many of you know you can feed a dog? Yeah. So teaching is like feeding. And you, feeding is good. It's good to feed your dog. But if you and I have a dog and all we ever do is feed that dog and we don't take time to teach it to sit or to lay down or to not jump up on the table, that dog doesn't become what it was supposed to become. It's not the contributing joyous member of the family that it could have been. Instead, it's chained up out back or somebody shooting at it at the neighbor's. Because of why? No training. Training is doing, not just feeding. Two years you could have a dog and you feed it, feed it, feed it. All you just did is allow a lot of bad habits. But doing is training. And so I'm going to, if you got this video, maybe you can see if you can get it started. I don't know if you can or you can't. Yeah, there we go. Okay, back it up and we'll turn it up. Uh, And This is where I had seen in my heart. I saw just an old video. This old video, and, the, and, and get it started over again, or pause it, back it up, because I don't want you to see it or hear it yet. I don't mind if you see it. This is, a story, this is the, basically a video of a, a little boy and a family that's broken, breaking. But this little boy stands, stands in as part of the rescue mission. That's what this is about, because somebody's in you. The helper, the Holy Spirit's in you to be a help, to be a part of a rescue. If your daddy's sick, if your mama's hurting, if if your if your brother, if if anything like listen, uh, one of the things that 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 you can trust is the love of God. The Bible says that Jesus was moved with compassion. When compassion moves you, you can pray. The love of God, and so as this is playing tonight. We're going, to pull, we're going to hit play on this. It's about a three-minute song. You're going to listen to it. And there's, the anointing's on it, even though it was in 1980-something, back when I was a kid, maybe 91. And you, you can spark tonight. You can get your lighter back out. And you can, you know the place that's locked up. You know the place that you, has been heavy on your heart. You know that the, the one that where the Lord has said, I've been asking you to stand in the gap concerning this, and you've prayed once, but your prayer has been hmm, not really, it's just been words not mixing your heart. I'm here to tell you tonight, God's watching over his word to perform it. He's looking for somebody to be a part of the rescue mission for families, for nations, for schools. And I want you to just watch this video, and, and as, we're, as you're doing this, listen to the Holy Spirit tell you, remind you what you're to be standing in the gap for. And as we close, we're going to just take a moment to, to pray before we close tonight, okay? If you'll turn the volume up on it and hit play.
too hard for him to do. I, I love that video. God's a restorer. He's a redeemer. But he's looking for us. I don't know if you caught that at the beginning of the video. He says us. When the, in other words, God in, God with you. God wants to work with no matter your age, no matter your stage of faith, he says, be like a child. Just be a part of the rescue mission. Wherever your heart, wherever the Lord is, draws you, open your mouth. Release prayer from your heart. The heartfelt, fervent prayer. This is... James chapter 5, 16 on the Amplified. The heartfelt, fervent God. Prayer of a righteous man or woman, child, makes so much power, tremendous power, more power than the enemy ability to hold. You saw in that video that, that man, he wanted what he... He wanted back too. I believe that even within people, there's, there's this, even if it's buried by all this stuff, there's, there's a desire deep within. In that prayer, as he pulled that, it continued and he prayed and he prayed and, and he pulled that picture out and he prayed. And you remember, he threw his hands on the steering wheel and he said, I got to go home. I wonder when the prodigal son, his dad standing on the hill every day, what do you think his dad was doing for his son? He was saying, son, I'm here. Come home. You know, your prayer doesn't have to be some spectacular, all these scripture references or it just has to be from your heart and that's the rescue God partners with us right here and he says will you stay in the gap don't just stand in it but I stay in it let's stand tonight thank you Lord where we've, where we've stood where we haven't stood Lord we're just saying tonight we're not going to just be those that stood we're going to be those that stay where we, where, we, where we used to stand, Lord, we just we, we make a, a statement tonight from our hearts. We'll stay in the gap. Lord, until, uh, until we see the mountain move, we'll stay in the gap. We'll stay in the gap praying for our nation. We'll stay in the gap praying for our, our parents. We'll stay in the gap praying for our loved ones. We'll stay in the gap praying for our schools and our teachers. Stay in the gap.
praying for those that hurt us. We'll stay in the gap. Father, thank you tonight for just a reignite of prayer in this house. A reignite of prayer in our homes. As we sit and pray at the dining room table or maybe we're at a fast food place that our prayers would become more than just about the hamburger but you would move us Lord you said you were seeking someone to stand and to stay in that gap Lord you we could just tell you tonight you found us you found me you'll find faith in this house You'll find faith in my house. We will be, and this house will be, a house of prayer. There's nothing too hard for you. There's nothing you can't do. We just say thank you tonight for just testimony after testimony of rescues happening for your glory in the name of Jesus. Thank you for staying power. In the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Well, we have a watermelon, water, ice cream, all kinds of stuff like that. Ice cream from last time. Landon was eating a Snickers bar the other night. And I was like, man, where'd you get that? He's like, there's some leftovers. So, um, but yeah, so we're going to go out the back and grab your kids and all that. But we're going to do the same thing we've done before where we go through those back doors when you're ready. And there will be watermelon outside. The, the, the shop window will be open for ice cream. And uh, we'll see you there. Let's uh, hang out together tonight. Oh, one more thing. Pastor Awesome. Oh, one ice cream. One ice cream per person because we didn't buy new stuff. Yeah. But there's watermelon.